So in the last section, we talked about quadratic regression, and we talked about it in the context of finding a system of equations whose solution gives us the best fit for a quadratic equation. Um, and so we generalize the derivation of the quadratic regression from linear regression. And so what we can do is uh, remind ourselves that we're looking for a model of y as a function of x. And uh, what we've done so far are using two types of possible functional forms for this model. So uh, we have the linear model, which assumes that y is some number, a single number multiplied by x plus a constant. We've also considered the case where y is a number multiplied by x squared plus a different number multiplied by x plus a third constant number. Okay. So this is a line, this is a parabola, and uh, the regression form allows us to construct the data matrix and stuff it in such a form that we can solve for all of these p's, p1, p2, p3, et cetera. And so the generalized form of what we're doing here is fitting the data to a polynomial. Okay? Both of these are polynomials. And so this is a first order polynomial, polynomial, okay? And this is a second order polynomial. And uh, we can write more larger and more complicated forms full of polynomials. For example, a third order polynomial would look like the following. We simply add another term in front that is something, a number, times x cubed. And then, of course, we have all of the other terms that we inherited from, this is just an x to the 1 power, um, plus p4 here. Okay, so first order polynomial, second order polynomial, third order polynomial, and et cetera, and so on and so forth. And so what we're going to notice here is that as we increase the, the order of the polynomial, what we're doing is we're saying that I'm going to assume that my data is best fit for my curve of something specified by the shape of my polynomial function. Now, what I don't know are all of, of these multipliers. I don't know all of these numbers that I need to multiply by each of these terms in order to get the best possible shape, but best possible function of that particular shape to fit my, my data. Um, and as we increase the order of the polynomial, what we're also doing is increasing the complexity of the model that we're fitting. So if we count the number of p's, the number of parameters here, in the first order polynomial, um, their number of parameters is 2. Right? In the second order polynomial, there's three of these p's that we have to fit. So this is a three parameter model. This one is a four parameter model. And if we wrote the general nth order polynomial, it would look like something like the following. So p1 equals x to the n, where n is just some large positive integer, plus p2 x to the n minus 1, plus p3 x to the n minus 2, so on and so forth, until we get to p sub n times x plus p n plus 1. Okay? So this is a general nth order polynomial, and you can plug in any po positive integer for n that you want. And the number of parameters you would end up with is n plus 1. And so what we're noticing here is that as you increase the order of the polynomial, you get more and more complex models. Now, fortunately, as long as you can write down the functional form of the shape that you would like to fit your data to, we can use exactly the same strategy that we, we, we had before in order to solve it. So the strategy we took before was uh, trying to phrase the problem with as many data points as you have. So I have many points of x, many, many points for y, and try to construct this V matrix such that the solution to P in of this system of equations are all of the parameters that we would like to solve for. Okay? And so when we had a uh, first order polynomial, right, we had all of the x's and a column of 1's, and that was our v matrix. In the second order polynomial, we had a column of x squared, a column of x, and a column of 1's, and that was our v matrix. Right? 
And so I hope you're starting to see here that this is actually a pattern that we can continue following no matter how complex this particular polynomial model gets. So in the case of the third order polynomial, we would have a uh, V matrix where the first column is all of my x coordinates to the cube to the third power, all of my x coordinates squared, all of my x coordinates, and a column of ones, right? And in general, for the nth order polynomial, all we would have to do is construct a V matrix, right? So I'll write that explicitly here. I'm going to construct my V matrix so that the first column is all of my x coordinates to the nth power, all of my x coordinates to the n minus 1 power, stack those up, all of my x coordinates to the n minus 2 power, stack those up, and so on and so forth until we get to the column of x's and the column of 1's. And that would be my V matrix, right? And then we would expect a P vector here that has the number of parameters that we've counted here. So this would have n minus 1 elements. And all of that equals all of my dependent measurements y here. And this form allows us to solve arbitrarily more complicated models as long as they follow this form. OK? And so you can use the strategy of constructing the V matrix and solving for P with the backslash command in order to just do, um, do polynomial fits of, um, of this kind. Um, and what I'm going to show you now is that as long as the, the model, the shape that you're trying to fit, is a polynomial, something you can write of this form, there's actually a built-in command in MATLAB that you can use for solve these questions. It's really convenient uh, because it saves you from having to construct this V matrix by hand every time. And so it's the, the polyfit command, and I will show you how that works. So uh, let's go back to the data we had before, um, which is uh, this data set here, where it looks like we have something of the second order. We have a second order polynomial, right? And so what we did in the last section was construct a V matrix by hand from this data of 1,000 um, 1, data points. And I'm going to show you how to do this instead uh, as a shortcut using the polyfit function. So here's the polyfit function. You call polyfit. And the inputs that it expects are the list of x coordinates, the list of y coordinates, just like we just visualized in the scatter pop above. And I need to tell it what order polynomial I want. Okay? So this is a decision you have to make as a person who's analyzing data. You look at your data, and you try to think, oh, well, you know, it doesn't look like a linear regression is going to fit in this case because it's obviously not just going up or going down. And uh, so the next more complex one that I can try is a second order polynomial. So let's try that. I'm going to put in 2 for the third parameter, telling the function that I want something of this form here, the second order polynomial here. Okay? And so what I'm expecting as a return, as the output, is a p that is a vector with three elements in it, p1, p2, and p3, in that order. Okay? And so let's run that, and we can see what p looks like. Um, and what I'm also going to do is uh, plot the polynomial prediction from the polyfit on top of the data. Um, and I've just written the code here um, so that we can do this more quickly. So what we're going to do is, uh, well, first let's run this one piece of code first. We're going to, uh, we made our data. Uh, we're going to evaluate p. And uh, let's just take a peek at what p equals and see if it's the, exactly the same as we expect it to be, because that's always a good idea. So here's p. And uh, fortunately, p is the size we want it to be. It is a, uh, is a vector with three elements, because we asked for a second word polynomial, and therefore we get n plus 1, three elements. Now, um, the MATLAB version of this function returns p as a row vector instead of a column vector, but that, in this case, doesn't really seem to matter because it's a vector, and we know the order of the, uh, order of the parameters that are listed in the p vector. Okay? So let's go back and uh, try to plot what the shape of that p vector that we saw for from polyfit actually looks like. And so to do that, I'm going to construct an x hat vector, just like I did before. So these are all the points in the x horizontal direction that I would like to plot. And I'm going to evaluate my polynomial, as specified by p, at each of those x locations. And so I can construct this by hand, or I can uh, evaluate it using this function here, the polyval function, the polynomial evaluation function, where p are, are, the, uh, are the parameters that specify the orders, the, the coefficients of the orders of all of the polynomials. Okay? And so if you run this piece of code, um, what it's going to do is, again, visualize the data like we had before. So those are all the blue dots. 
and um, the, the polynomial that we fit using the poly, poly fit function and evaluated with the poly eval function is now that uh, red dashed line right there. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Furthermore, it looks l exactly like what we had before by uh, constructing the V matrix by hand with second order polynomial. Okay, now what we can do is say, well, okay, so that's a second order polynomial. It's looking pretty good. What happens if we try to fit something that is a third order polynomial to it? Okay, let's just try it, see what happens. So, um, because we have polyfit, and um, if you look inside a polyfit, you look at the documentation and how it runs and how it functions, it's actually constructing a V matrix exactly like what we were doing by hand before. And so this is just a shortcut. It's not doing anything mysterious or different. You know exactly what's happening in the guts of this function now. So let's type in three here. So now we are uh, fitting a third order polynomial, which means we are expecting four parameters to pop out when we, when we do this. And we're going to evaluate it in exactly the same way. And here it is. Interesting. Okay? That is now a third order polynomial. And the interesting thing is that because the data hasn't changed, it really is just the bowl shape, it's not surprising that it doesn't look very different from the second order fit, right? Because it has to fit the data. So this is now a third order polynomial that fits the data, right? So what we can do now is go back to the command line and say, okay, so now that we have a uh, more complicated function that we're trying to fit, what is, what is p, right? So this is what p was before when we were asking for a second order polynomial with three parameters. Now we've asked for a third order polynomial with four parameters. Let's say what those numbers are. And interestingly, if you compare the numbers, what you can see is that it's come up with a, um, the third order term here. So this is p1, right? So we look back here at the equation, p1 times x cubed. This number is actually quite small. Okay? Whereas the second number here, which is p2, which is the x squared term, is identical to the x squared term for when we ask for a second order polynomial. Right? So what it's actually telling us is that the contribution of the third order term is very small. It's not quite zero, but it is quite small. Right? And so even though we're asking for a third order polynomial, what we're getting is something where the third order term, the x cubed term, is actually pretty small. And the rest of these numbers are the same as if we had asked for a second order polynomial. Okay, so that makes sense. That makes sense is what we get. And furthermore, because we're constrained by the data, we have to get something that looks as much like the data as possible. All right, so just for fun, let's see what would happen if we uh, went in the other direction. And instead of asking for a third order polynomial, we're going to ask for a first order polynomial. Okay, so now we're going to ask for something of the form of the first equation here where it is going to be a line. And uh, let's see what happens, right? So let's run this function. And here is what the best line is, right? So what you're going to notice, well, first of all, it doesn't work very well, right? <laughs> it doesn't look anything like the data. Um, and again, let's see if this makes sense, right? It does make sense because um, the first order polynomial is constrained so that if, uh, if p is greater than, is, uh, is greater than 0, then y is always going to get bigger as x gets bigger. And if p is less than 0, then y is always going to get smaller as x gets bigger. So they're either positively correlated or negatively correlated, and there's nothing more complicated going on here. And that's exactly what we see, right? It's constrained that it only has it's a straight line with a slope. All right, so it's found the best line that it possibly could, given that we were looking for a line. And since the data doesn't actually lie on a line, it doesn't, it's, not very, it's not a very good line, but this is the best one we could get. Okay? And so in this way, we can, find, uh, we can find polynomial fits of higher and higher order for the data. Um, and so just as a preview of something that we're going to cover in the, in the next lecture, what we're going to do is, uh, just for fun, try to ask it to fit this data, which is obviously a quadratic type data, to something that is way too higher order. Let's see what happens. Okay? So just for fun, let's type in 15 here. Okay, so now we're going to try to fit this data that's probably a second order function to something that's way too complicated for it. Okay, so now we're going to try a 15th order polynomial in order to fit this data. And uh, let's just see what it does. Let's see what the best 15th order polynomial fit for this data is. So let's run that. And you can see that just like when we fit the third order polynomial, it actually fits the data pretty well, right? It's doing a pretty good job. It looks roughly like the data, right? So let's then take a look at what the p's actually turned out to be in this particular case. Uh, well, okay, interesting. So it actually did pop up a, a warning, 
right? And the warning is, um, is because it's saying that the polynomial is badly conditioned, adding points with distinct x values, reduce the degree of the polynomial, or try centering the scaling as described in the help function for polyfit. So what MATLAB is actually doing is, that, OK, fine, I will fit. I will consent to fit a 15th order polynomial to your data, but really, I don't think this is a good idea. Okay, but let's see what it did anyway. Let's see the best that let's see the, the best that it could do. So here are the fifth, the 16 values. Uh, remember, so that the number of parameters you expect is the order of the polynomial plus one. So there's 16 values here um, that specify the multipliers, the coefficients of each of those terms. And what you can see is, like we expect. The first numbers for the, so this is the, this number times x to the 15th, this number times x to the 14th, this number times x to the 13th, et cetera. All of these are very small numbers. And that's a good thing because they should be small numbers. There's really no higher order terms here, all right? And it's not until we get to um, right around here, the 10th one, all right? So, and down here, so this is the constant term, that one's the linear term, the quadratic term. And now it's actually finding a couple of numbers here. It's saying that there's third and fourth and fifth order terms in this data, which we know to be not true because we constructed the data, right? And so even though it is possible to fit any data with almost any model and do the regression, try to find the best possible line, this is telling us that maybe this is not such a good idea. Okay, so the, the question of model selection of how do we pick the right model for particular data uh, is the topic of something that we'll come back to in the subsequent lecture. So, I, but I wanted to preview it here to because we just learned this fancy new function that allows us to play with the order of the polynomial very, very easily to see what would happen if you try to fit relatively simple data that has a simple explanation with a model that it really is way too complicated for it. Okay, it'll do it. It'll give you an answer, and the prediction even looks pretty good. But it does not mean it's the right thing to do. Okay, so we'll come back to that a little bit later.